Greetings, everyone. It's Chrissy. It's Tanner from Common Sense Education. And as we do, we come to you every Tuesday to give you a new tool that may be useful for your classroom. And today, Tanner, what do you have for us? I'm going to take a look at Convene the Council, which is one of the newer, maybe newest iCivics games. Uh, and iCivics is a storied uh, civics, social studies program that includes a whole series of games that are all free along with curriculum for the games. Um, games are available on the web as well as a bunch of app platforms. And they kind of sit in the middle school to high school range. So Convene the Council is just like the rest of the iCivics. Uh, Convene the Council takes on diplomacy, though. It was developed in partnership with the Council on Foreign Relations. Um, so it kind of places the player in the position of being the president and presiding over the National Security Council and having to deal with um, kind of international issues and prioritize what issues to tackle and what the response should be. Um, so let's just, I think the easiest way to do this is to just take a look um, at the game itself. And I've kind of got it going here. Let me zoom in a bit. I should say there's audio that I've got turned off and a lot of different language support. Um, that's a great thing about iCivics is they always have a, ni a nice set of um, affordances. They've got a great... Um, reference bank here with definitions and there are lesson materials that you can find in the iCivic site. Um, but one of the key things with this game is this sort of set of priorities that you manage. So this is the very beginning of the game. As you can see here, it's an eight turn game. So it, it, it can go by pretty fast. You might be able to fit this in a class period if, if students really cruise, but maybe just over a couple class periods. Um, but you set like a kind of focus um, for your uh, council. So let's choose prosperity here. And then you get presented with scenarios. And here's your little national security council. And it, you know this is all... Um, voiced audio, which is nice. And there's um, some nice little definitions embedded in here. Um, you got your, your different parts of the council kind of represent different points of view, different agencies, priorities. Um, then you get in here and um, you get like presented with um, choices of policies that are meant to um, lead to that kind of focus that I had chosen. So increased prosperity, what should we do here? And you get presented with different policies you can implement. And those policies then affect these meters. And often you'll be balancing um increasing some meters and decreasing others along the way. So the, the heart of the game is trying to, um, you know, increase prosperity, increase that meter. I actually don't know which one of the meters it is. <laughs> and this is kind of one of the challenges with the game is I think it could do a little bit better about showing that connection between the focus um, you know, it, it does, it handily shows you what meters it'll increase, but it'd be nice if it said like, Hey, really focus on this one, by the way. Um, but so you, you review these potential policies and they're all, you know, similar to things that would be actually be happening in the world. Um, and you authorize one, it'll then affect your meters. You convene your council. And um, you then choose who should oversee 
the implementation of that policy. So you you part of the game is learning about how these decisions, these diplomatic foreign relations decisions get made and the kinds of things that need to be balanced when making those decisions and that certain administrations will focus on building up certain qualities on the global scale um, versus others. And then you also learn about the different departments and who does what. Um, so you choose one and then you find out whether that was the right delegation or not. So Department of Defense was not the one that I should have chosen for that one. So there's a couple, like there's an interesting combination of things you're learning. Like you're learning about the nuts and bolts about the National Security Council, about a lot of these terms and interests. Um, and you're kind of learning about the different things that get balanced. Um, but then you learn some of that factual information too about the different departments. Um, also, as you go by on your turns, different things happen, different kind of crises that you have to respond to. Um, and then you go through the same kind of process of hearing from your council and they kind of set up the, um, you know, the different options and things you should be thinking about, but then ultimately you've got to make the decision that will lead to, you know, the changes in your overall meters. Um, and that's kind of the way the game goes at the very end. And I can show this to you here. The very end, you get your kind of overall results um, that shows like some some you know kind of points gained. This we felt isn't clear enough as isn't a good enough assessment really. Um, it doesn't really communicate to you how well you did ultimately. Um, our reviewer also felt that. Um, students could easily just click through and they can make the world's worst decisions just constantly just fly through this, not paying any attention, just clicking screens, not doing much kind of interesting interaction or um, and fly through and really um, kind of just not really play, just click screens. Um, they felt like students should be, uh, there maybe should be a little bit more consequence for what you're doing um, and maybe a bit better communicated how what you're doing is affecting those scores and that kind of stuff. So it's um, that's kind of why this came in as a, as a three-star review. Like it's it's tackling a really interesting thing it is full of factual information that you often don't really encounter um, in games. And there are some interesting choices to be made, but I think it's a little too click screens, watch the numbers go up for our tastes. Like we'd like to see an another, maybe some more interesting interactivity or some more layers added to this experience. Yeah, that makes sense. It seems like, trying to boil it down to a point and meter system takes away from the complex issues. And I mean, I totally see why they're doing it the way they're doing it. Um, and it mirrors some of the, I don't know if it's like the civilization games, but there are those games. So you have to like balance the needs of the people and the, so it mirrors those in kind of a cool way, but yeah, I, it, it, it's, it's difficult. Yeah, the, More layers, I, complexity. I hadn't actually thought of that, but that is kind of the answer to me is maybe if you took away the meters, right, entirely and had it more about seeing how what you did has consequences, like among your National Security Council, but with other countries and, and internally as well, and students just seeing that happen um, would be maybe more effective ultimately, right? Than the meters, which kind of obfuscate it 
and add an like extra layer of having to parse like, okay, I made this meter go up. What was that meter again? And how does this match with me trying to increase prosperity? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like a, a game of a gamification where it may not work. Yeah. So well, yeah. And do you know if there are any lesson plans that go with this or? Yes. Every, everything on iCivics. Yeah. Has, if you go to the site, um, and go to, and, and sign in as a teacher and go to like every game has a full set of lessons and extensions for the games that really would, would probably make some of, would fix some of these issues, I would assume. Um, yeah. I mean, the at worst case scenario, these are always so it seems like the iCivics games are always so rich and at the very least a starting place yeah. <laughs> or a tool to build on something else. So it gives you some great material to work with, even yeah. if you can't just use it all by itself. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Tanner. Um, and again, just come on back every week. Come back, see what we got for you. Sign up for our newsletter so you see what's on the docket, what's new on the site. Come visit us at commonsense.org slash, slash, slash education. And, um, you know, we would love if you would like, subscribe, and uh, let us know what you need. We're here for you.